it really is just a, a hobby out of control. It's uh, modeling in one-to-one -one scale. I never was satisfied with doing things on a small scale. It had to be outrageous, outlandish, and nearly impossible before I was happy. So this is where it gets you. It's a way to, I guess I'm trying to prove myself or to something or to someone that I can do all this nearly impossible stuff myself. It's a character flaw, actually. But I guess it uh, does have a little bit of uh, fruit at the end of the road. Shouldn't lose too much money on the deal. Might even make some and preserve some of this that is nice to preserve. I would make these large prints uh, all the way up from 16 by 20 to, to the big ones. And then I would sell them at uh, railroad conventions. I did that for a few years. Graduated on up to working on full-size railroad cars and went deeper into this abyss. I was satisfied with that until the railroad got rid of cabooses and some people in the historical society that I was a member of the Wabash people started buying cabooses. So I thought I had to have one too, so I ended up with a caboose. That led to more and more cars, enough for a train actually. It's pretty warm in this metal building. Last summer it was so hot, the only way I could survive was pull off clothes. So after a while, I was down to shoes and I thought, wow, this, this feels pretty good. You know, I see why people do this now. So when I had to put on clothes to go outside, I go, good God, this is really uncomfortable. So I just got into the kind of the habit of getting rid of the clothes and easier, less things to carry around, less weight, easier to step over things, to be a little careful here around hot metal and things, but got to do that anyway. There's normally no one else here, so it's not a problem, uh, somebody wandering up, so. Uh, if they do, I guess it's not the end of the world. This rounded end is called an observation car. The, this is the streamliner version, which was round. And this section had seats that reclined and swiveled. 13 of them were in this section. I have eight of those to replace these. This is an Amtrak situation uh, set up here, which accommodates more people. So this car was built in 1950. And, uh, the whole train uh, ran together uh, about February 1950. Someday this car will be riding on the back of Amtrak and as they say, be on the high iron again, the tall rails, the big rails, the main line. It'll be pretty special to see the Wabash Bluebird running again.